Okay, what about the story about the woman pestering the judge with a request and being told to follow her example? We talked about that a week or two ago. Okay, there's a story in the Bible <clears throat> that Jesus tells about prayer where he says, okay, there's this story of an unrighteous judge, this judge that's a total scoundrel, and um, this woman keeps coming and coming and coming to him, and um, finally he wears him down and says, okay. There's a difference in what the Bible's talking about here, which is consistency in prayer, different which is different than repetition. Repetition I'm talking about is, if I pray hard enough, which is putting the control in myself. If I do this, then God will do this. Treating God like a vending machine. What Jesus is talking about in the story of the unrighteous judge is persistence. I'm staying in the relationship with God, continuing to bring this request to Him. I'm not letting go of this. I'm hanging on to Him because He is the only hope, and I'm not taking this on myself. Which is a big difference between, okay, if I pray enough and do it right, because he talks about vain repetition um, in, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, where he says, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly. Uh, in verse 7, when you pray, don't babble on and honest people of the religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating the words over and over again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask Him. So there's a balance here that he's talking about. Consistency in prayer, not letting go, going, God, you are the answer, and I'm not going to give up when I don't hear from you right away, because sometimes God doesn't answer right away. But that's not me controlling God. If I do this jig, if I pray enough, then God will answer me. Does that make sense? Okay? There's a, there's a difference there that's really based on the heart relationship. Am I trying to control God, or am I merely throwing myself into a relationship with God and asking for His help? Okay? And staying consistent because I know He's the only one that can help me. Oh, we're just going to go off the phone now? Okay. 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 Can we get a witness on this one? Can you go over the time thing a little bit more? I'm too busy and tired when I get home and just want to relax. Can anyone say it? yes? Okay. That's so what we talked about last week. Um, yes, Satan's greatest way to distract you from entering into a relationship with him is by being too busy. Okay. So I want to talk through a couple principles. We talked about these the last two weeks, actually. We talked about time. You may want to go on to the podcast and listen to them because we talked about them a little bit more in depth. First of all, God's matter, the way God deals with resources is different from the way that we deal with resources. He can stretch time or make you more efficient. That's why I believe it's so important. I'm not a boring person, but once again, I'm being drawn back into making my time with God first thing, which is really hard right now in my house with four kids, and some of them sleep in my room from time to time. Um, the three-year-old ends up, you know, the three-year-old ends up in the bed, so when you wake up, she wakes up. Um, um, that, I, that I'm taking time in the morning, even though I'm not a morning person, because if I don't, everything else will crash in around it. Okay? That's why I'm saying, make a time, set a time. Well, I'm too busy. I don't have time. You will never have time until you make the time. I don't say this out of judgment and condemnation. I wrestle with this all the time. Okay? But if you don't make the time, it won't happen. If you don't make it a priority, it won't happen. That's why you have to say, this is going to be my time that I do it. Secondly, it may cause you to go to a level of trust with God which says, God, I can't spend this time with God and accomplish all these other things. The Bible says that my God will supply all of your needs, not all of your wants, desires, or things that you feel other people want you to do. Especially that last one. So that may mean that you're going to have to say no and say, I'm overcommitting, overstretching myself, or I'm taking responsibility for some part of my life or someone else's life that's not my business. I'm compelled to do too much. I'm doing more than what God's actually called me to. Because many of us, I don't know everybody, but I know for myself, I would love to have a savior complex. If I don't do it, the world will collapse. <laughs> right? That's Jesus' job. Always has been, always will be. Okay? So the time thing is a battle. But that's why I'm saying this. It is time. And, and, and again, I invite you to listen to the two podcasts from the last two weeks because they're integral to this. Because all the rest of this stuff, if we don't decide and make the time and say, all right, it's going to be at this time. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make my time with God. And then when you stop, fall, it gets skipped, the child throws up all over you in the middle of the night, whatever it might be, you get back on track and give yourself a lot of grace. You're not a failure because you missed it. Again, this has nothing to do with earning your salvation. This is the desire to go deeper with God. This is not about you being good enough. And if you feel like this is another taxing thing on my back and, oh my word, i got to do this to be good enough for God, then this sermon isn't for you because you've got to deal with some other stuff in your life and in your heart because you've been spiritually abused by people who have given you a completely wrong message about God. Okay, that was fun. Thank you. Good, good question.